very good evening from india a very good morning good afternoon and all those wishes wherever in the world you are looking this interview from in yet another uh, episode of uh, the revolving perspective today we are going to talk to somebody from amsterdam this lady have a very successful career to to be proud of a very decorative career and have been into entrepreneurship journey now so obviously uh, we all are looking forward to learn from her as to what her takeaways from this entrepreneurship journey are what what were the challenges that she faced or how she have overcome them what are the learnings that a couple of uh, uh, leaves from her life if she can throw us upon to us to learn something from and then it's going to be a fun that's for sure so ladies and gentlemen uh, let me welcome joan first uh, on your screen joan a very good evening from india and welcome to the revolving perspective it have been a pleasure to have you here Thank you, Ganjan. Nice Thank to see you. you. Before I start, Joanne, a couple, a small introduction of yours, so that our audience know whom they are uh, witnessing and whom they are watching it out here. Ladies and gentlemen, there are only few in the world who pick up the traits of their professional career right in the childhood. A lot depends on the atmosphere in the early age to enable that. Daughter of a hotel management, uh, hotel manager, picking up the same industry sector. and you know the chances of uh, her being successful and her putting her best into the in, uh, profession increases multifold having worked in the hospitality industry in countries like us and uk and handling luxury properties the journey took joan to a largest wholesale tour operator of the world then comes a moment in all of our lives which really pushes us to do something which we love the most and similar was similar would have been a moment in joan's life which we'll get to understand from her but that was the time when joan really decided to start reviews for you now what reviews for you is obviously we'll uh, hear it from the horse's mouth here so i don't want to take away that opportunity from joan to explain that to you but identifying the gaps and understanding our own ability to fill those gaps in the marketplace is what the first sign of a successful entrepreneur should be and believe me that is where the joan started from this is the this was the moment which came to her mind and he entered into this world which we all call a cutthroat competitive world but then we will also understand from her how she have taken it up so joan a very warm welcome to you once again and let me start this question right from what i was just uh, telling my audiences in terms of uh, you know what all you did to come down to here so first question to you a three decades of career countries like us uk and all a very successful and a very uh, decorated career so what actually made you to enter into entrepreneurship <laughs> well, I guess um the last role that I had, I was there for 27 years and I think after a while you kind of think maybe there's something else that I could be doing. And as a as as a contractor, I was um responsible for hotels in Amsterdam. And Amsterdam was a very very uh, popular destination. So yeah. the occupancies that the hotels experienced in Amsterdam were, were very very high. So for example um 90% occupancy wasn't unheard of and um it was talking to my hotels on a regular basis and they would um often say that because their occupancies are so high their prices are already as high as they can go so how else are they able to increase their revenue and one yes. of the ways they wanted to do it was to attract more direct business to their hotels um and another way was to reduce uh, distribution costs mm. and um for those in hospitality um they'll be aware that booking.com which is the largest uh, online travel agency in the world was born and raised in Amsterdam okay. so these hotels had a, an exceptionally difficult job because this giant was you know also their neighbor <laughs> um but at the same time whenever i used to go on 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 a holiday even though i was in the industry and i would often get recommendations from my colleagues i always looked at online review sites just to check what people were saying about a hotel before i i booked it and i noticed that um in the majority of cases hotels weren't actually responding to their reviews but i thought there must be a way by responding to your reviews creatively you can also increase the direct bookings that you're looking for and reduce the distribution costs that you have to pay in commission um and so that's when i asked some of my hotels is this a good business idea why don't you answer your reviews 
Um, and basically, the general consensus was that they just didn't have the time. Um, and basically, that's where it <laughs> came from. Okay, so if I take a couple of uh, words from you, what you have just explained us, one was obviously preparing before we enter into the world. So that means you already had a discussion with a couple of your hot hotels and then, you know, you checked out with them whether this business stands its foot on the in the today's world or not. So that was one good thing that I could understand from what you just said. The second thing was also, you know, normally entrepreneurs, uh, you know, they tend to sort of, uh, once a business deal is done and the services are delivered, they tend to just move away from it. Whereas, you know, in your words, if I may say, if a hotel uh, looks after the reviews properly, because that review is coming from a satisfied customer or maybe an unsatisfied customer, whatever, but the action on those reviews can get further more customers, correct? So, yeah, what, it's, yeah. It, it's how you respond to the reviews is very important. So, absolutely. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it takes, if you're going, to, for me, a job worth doing is worth doing well. Um, and that can also take time. So there are certain aspects that I believe should be included um, in your, in your review response. So a lot of, as I said, a lot of businesses either don't respond to their reviews at all, mm -hmm. um, or they respond generically. So Correct. if you were to have a look at a couple of hotels, um, you know, and have a look at how they respond. Uh, they can be very brief, they can be very generic, they sometimes don't refer to the, the name of the person who wrote the review. Um, and also when you do look at some luxury properties and you see, you know, how they respond or if they respond, it's basically, um, it, it's letting them down. It's, they, they build up a brand um, and yet when they respond to their reviews, they're, they're kind of damaging that brand. And I also say that, you know, um, customer, sorry, customer service shouldn't end just when the guest checks out. Absolutely. Um, you know, they, they go home, they, they post a review. Um, and while they were in the property, it was, you know, everything they wanted, they could have. The service was impeccable. So why does that stop once they've left the building? You're right. So if I may take this uh, a bit forward, you know, it's not only true with uh, your type of other industry as such, it's true with the, almost every business today. A customer who is who, with whom you have checked out in your uh, terms, you know, that customer is uh, a, a li living testimonial for your business. So wherever he goes, he can, he will talk about you or he will uh, speak with, to his acquaintances about you. And so it could be a very good source of your repeat business, a very proven source. So for that matter, we will really have to, we should look after those customers as well on priority, correct? Absolutely. I mean, review sites basically do an awful lot of marketing for you without you actually having to pay them for it. So it is word of mouth. And in the old days, word of mouth was, you know, to your friends or your family. But now word of mouth is, you know, I mean, for example, there are 3 billion um, hotel searches uh, on Google alone and 5 billion restaurant searches. So a month, this is a month. So that's a huge audience um, that can see and, and, and read about what other people are saying about, about your product or about your service or about your property. And, you know, we've heard it so many times, um, people buy from other people. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's very important to ensure that the product and the service that they're getting is, is, is you know, is great. Um, but it's also very important to um, engage with your guests and, and try and build customer loyalty by responding uh, to your reviews. But it's also very important that you actually read and monitor the reviews because if people have the same um, negative feedback, then it would, you know, it would serve you well to, to fix that. Absolutely. So an example, I, an example I have is that, um, you know, it might be that in a hotel, the general manager wants to change all the carpets in the bedrooms, mm -hmm. but maybe no, no one's complaining about the carpets. Maybe they're all saying that there isn't enough lighting in the bathroom. So if he's got, you know, limited funds, it might be better that he actually leaves the carpets alone and changes the lighting in the bathroom. So it should be about the customer experience. And that's why the feedback that the guests are giving on review sites is incredibly important. It can help in so many ways. Um, but obviously responding to the reviews, it, it shows as well that you, you care about your, your guests, it care, you care about their feedback. 
Um, and also you have to remember when you respond to reviews, you're not just responding to that person who left that review, but you're also responding to the, you know, thousands or millions or billions of people who are potentially going to be reading it at some point in the future. Absolutely. So this digital world actually have uh, brought us to a stage wherein, you know, every word and every statement that we write or speak, it's there for eternity uh, for people to review. Okay, uh, Joanne, taking you back in a bit into your childhood, uh, from where all this started and from where the, your interest towards this industry vertical have really picked up. Uh, do you really feel that, you know, that have helped that sort of atmosphere wherein you uh, were born and, born and brought up, that have helped you into your career or into this particular entrepreneurship journey of last one year, anywhere? Um, well, yeah, my father was a hotel manager, so I, I grew up... Um, I, I didn't grow up in hotels, but spent a lot of time with him in hotels. And in England, uh, a very, uh, I think a very young age, 14, you're kind of asked what direction you want to take. And I, I, didn't, I didn't know. So I just thought um, I'd follow in my father's footsteps. Mm -hmm. um, but before that, actually, when I was four and I was asked what I wanted to be when I grew up, I said I wanted to be a tourist, <laughs> which at the time was quite funny. But Actually, I, I, I was and probably still am a tourist because although I live in Amsterdam now, I, I'm British. So um, and I've, you know, as you mentioned, I've I've worked uh, in the States uh, and, and London and, and now in Holland and also in France, actually. Um, mm -hmm. So, yes, that what my father did had a big influence. And so I, I studied uh, so that I could do a hotel management course. Um, and yes. And then from there, I worked in hotels in America, in London. Uh, and then I worked for this wholesaler. So the experience I picked up um, was, you know, really valuable to what I do today. So when I was in America as a housekeeper, every day I would trail my finger across, you know, yeah. the top of the fireplace or just to check for dust. And these little things are really important. So when I read, um, uh, when I see a review that, you know, there's there's been a, a lot of dust found or there were crisp wrappers under the bed, Mm -hmm. um, it annoys me because these things actually shouldn't be happening because they're very, you know, they, they, they just shouldn't be happening. Every checkout, you know, check in, it should be really, really checked well. So um, I think that all this has given me the knowledge uh, to do what I'm, I'm doing now. That's absolutely great, uh, Joanne. Uh, now, for a minute, let's uh, keep your business vertical uh, aside. OK, and let's uh, talk more general about entrepreneurs. Uh, I'm very sure you must be interacting with a lot many more people who are into different professions and different verticals. Um, I've seen you being very active over the social media, so I'll come to that later. But as a general entrepreneur, uh, there are people who are budding entrepreneurs or who are now looking at, uh, you know, start entering this entrepreneurship world. If I may ask you uh, the top three things that comes to your mind, which they should be taking care of before they really enter this world. Well, that's tricky. Okay, well, um, obviously you have to do your market research to make sure that there's a demand for whatever it is that you're planning on uh, selling or offering. Correct. Um, well, um, I was very fortunate that I do have um, backup, like I, I have a partner, so if it, if it was to go all pear-shaped, then... Um, but that's not really something that a budding entrepreneur can necessarily rely on. Um, a lot of planning is involved. So, for yes, example, I with myself, you know, I, I was jumping in with both feet. But actually, what this coronavirus time has given me is an awful lot of time to to research and really get to know exactly what I'm I'm, I'm selling. Um, and that's quite important because if you're if you're you have to have a belief in what you sell because mm -hmm. if you don't have the belief in what you sell, then nobody else will believe it either. Uh, and one thing that I, 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 I learned, which I think is really important, it's hard to put into action, perhaps, um, but I have a coach um, uh, and, and she said that uh, if you don't start investing in yourself, then how can you expect other people to invest in you? And as, as a startup, it's quite, you, you don't have an awful lot of money, so you really have to kind of think where where is the best place for me to, to invest in. Um, and that's a difficult one. That's a really difficult one. But you have to, you know, you have to realize that if you're not willing to invest in certain elements, then how on earth are your potential clients or customers going to invest in you? So I hope that answers your question. Yeah, you, you perfectly one. answered, actually. Uh, 
Okay, now uh, if that was a tricky one, I'll uh, get you to your domain expertise again back. Okay, and <laughs> let's talk about social media. Now you have you you are very active out there on LinkedIn. Okay, now if I may ask you, uh, in in many countries even now, social media have not picked up or is is picking up rather. Uh, unlike in your case, you know uh, the things have evolved from there, and you know the people that there are experts who are there to guide you and all that. But if I may, if I may tell you uh, the situation uh, in many of the countries wherein I keep interacting with entrepreneurs, uh, there is still a belief, you know, that social media is sort of something to have fun with. Uh, it's nothing to do with business, or th those sort of beliefs are slowly getting broken. So, your take on this: uh, uh, social media as a business tool, how important is it, and what is the uh, importance that people, that entrepreneurs, should be really putting in on? I think it's important to know where your target audience is, because for me, LinkedIn is is it's the only social media tool that I, I use. But I know that there's an awful lot of um, people using even TikTok these days, which initially I believe was for kids. But more and more um, business people are using TikTok um, and Instagram and Facebook. But um, for me at the moment, LinkedIn um, is where I'm at. And mm -hmm. to be honest it's almost like a full-time job for me and the reason why it's important is because um it's it's really i think the only social media channel that's seen as as, as really business uh, orientated um and you know it's very important that you are seen and that you nurture your audience and that you give them uh information that um, they can learn from because they need to, again, be people buy from people. And when I was contracting and I could actually go out and physically meet people, um, I would say maybe 80, 85% of my negotiations were, were all to do with how are you, how are the kids? And like mm -hmm. maybe the last 15% was really about business. And you can't, it's very hard, you can't do that on social media. So it's really well it's you know it's brought me to you and it's it's really opened a lot a lot of doors um um i i don't know where to be fair without it i don't know where i'd be right now no idea okay uh if i may add it to what you just said uh if you ask me honestly uh, joanne linkedin for me have been a very good source for learning so apart from business it is also about learning and if i may say uh one more step ahead it is a very good place for me to you know establish my personal brand because as you rightly said yeah. people buy from people so products and services come later first is your personal branding and how do you present yourself in front of the world and then comes your services your products and you know your experiences everything so that's what LinkedIn have been for me okay now uh, touching on one important aspect Joanne and I'm a fan of yours for that okay and um, these Friday jokes okay which you have been pushing across on LinkedIn now that's a very unique style of uh, presenting yourself to the world, and I know that everything I've got a, a meaning to behind it. Uh, one is obviously a pure engagement that could be a, a thought behind your mind, but then I know it is more than that to it. Uh, it's not only till engagement level. So how do you come up with I, I, this idea on such a serious business platform, and you know, and still able to engage a lot of people with your posts? and they all are happy, you are spreading happiness through that. So what is this all, all about? Well, you know, your post shouldn't always be about business. And, and, and as I said, it's very hard for people to get to know me uh, on LinkedIn. And, um, and I, I just, you know, my best meetings were always going in and having somebody sitting in front of me who was really, really difficult and really, I don't know, just not that warm and friendly. But if I could turn, make them smile or laugh at some point, then I came out winning regardless of, of what happened, you know, in the rest of the meeting. And so I just wanted to show, I guess, my humorous side. Um, but ironically, having um, my father, he wrote he wrote a, a joke book. Okay, that's great. Wow. And this is from my and this is my dad. So, so I, you know, I talk about my dad in, in regards to the fact that he was a hotel manager and he, mm -hmm. um, you know, he's my influence. And so the sad and that's why it's called the sad dad joke day, <laughs> because um, my dad, my, unfortunately, in this joke book, um, there's a lot of jokes that I it would it's not politically correct <laughs> to put onto LinkedIn. So I have mm -hmm. to find other resources. But um I just did that because, you know, the thing about social media, especially LinkedIn, is, you know, a, a lot of people have said to me, you know, 
do videos, do videos. And, and that petrifies me, even though I guess I, I'm kind of doing it now, I suppose. But that just to, that, that's that when you show yourself, you're a lot more vulnerable than when you're just, you know, uh, behind some text. Absolutely. Um, but but anyway, yeah. So I just thought, well, you know, I'm just going to take the plunge and you can't please all the people all the time. So some people will like it and some people won't. And and it's funny because I have, you know, got some really good connections from it and I even get requests now. So not all the jokes are mine. Um, and so it's just kind of built momentum. But of course, there is a fine line. But, you know, you know, one day a week to put a bit of a smile on people's face before the weekend. Why not? Nothing I don't. Like why not? So, yeah, I'm a big fan of yours. So uh, for that particular aspect of it. OK, so I've, rather I started uh, following your uh, post only after those jokes have started appearing. Because for me, it was something, you know, wherein the shackles have been broken. Uh, somebody is there to try out something different out here. And as you rightly said, to bring in a smile on somebody's face before the weekend, that really helps. So that part was well, uh, uh, means well articulated by you. There is one more thing which actually fascinated me when I was uh, going through your profile right in the beginning when we got introduced and I sent you a connection request. And that was when you were uh, sort of doing a series of posts of, on your journey, okay, on, on your life journey rather. Yeah. And that was the brilliant way to bring in uh, yourself onto a digital platform and explain to the world. Now, if I may, okay, you had a very great story to uh, narrate out onto the social media platform. Not everybody of us have. Even if I think I'll start uh, writing now about me, I won't find words to, you know, uh, describe that. So what is that one thing which uh, really struck your mind before you entered into those series of posts and, and have it helped your business somewhere? Um, it was, it was, it was because um, I was told that, you know, people need to get to know you, you, you know, how are they going to get to know you? Um, and also it allowed me to share my experience that I'm not just somebody who's decided to start a company answering reviews on behalf of hotels, but I'm actually somebody who has worked in hotels, has done a hotel management degree, has worked with hotels, has worked with uh, directors of revenue, general managers, even hotel owners. So it was also um, supposed to highlight my experience, um, again, which has led me to, you know, found the business that I'm in with all the experience and all the knowledge that I bring to, I bring to the table. Absolutely brilliant way of bringing out, uh, you know, your experience, which relates with your profession today. And, you know, making people to engage with you and understand you, you better. Uh, in a way, I would say that that also establishes the credibility of yours into the profession. So it's sort of a testimonial that you are yourself writing about you. So that was a brilliant way. And actually, that is what uh, connected us together because I was eagerly waiting every new day that, you know, now the second part of the story would be coming in. Now the third part would be coming in. So that was a, and see the power of social media. You are sitting in uh, Amsterdam, I'm in India. And then, you know, we got connected with a series of posts and you never know how this collaboration can turn out to be in future. So if I may uh, tell the audiences here, uh, you know, a brilliant way to do uh, and to bring yourself out in front of the public is we can uh, take a leaf or two from uh, Joanne's life and then see, or rather very recent life. It, uh, we are talking about last two months uh, when we have been interacting and, you know, uh, I have been following her post. Uh, it is important that, you know, you break the shackles and you bring something new to the world. You you really are able to showcase your own credibility into your profession. And as Joanne rightly said, people are buying people first and then the products have been at the cost of repeating, repeating this statement again. But that is what it is. So, Joanne, now uh, last five minutes and a, tr a tricky one, uh, not exactly tricky one. Uh, you won't find it difficult. That's my promise to you. But then still, let's attempt this uh, a rapid fire. Okay. Uh, a quick rapid fire. I am not expecting a big statement from you in the answers to it. And if you don't want to answer this, you can just say pass and we'll move forward. Okay. Uh, I feel like I'm a mastermind. Right. Okay. Go on. Yeah. Let's, let's attempt it out. Okay. There is nothing right and wrong out here. We are only looking at your experiences and your take on these questions. One thing that gives you the adrenal run uh, before every day morning which makes you to really come up uh, full swing into the world and then make it your own day. One thing that the one thing, sorry, say that again, say the beginning again. 
the one thing that inspires you really which uh, makes you to really come into the world and then make that your own day every day that that how okay. what, what that happens is Apart, aside from my family and my and my dogs of course um i just the excitement i i don't i don't sleep that much anymore and it's not because i'm anxious i just can't wait to see you know who's emailed me who's messaged me who's accepted my i don't know i just i'm just getting the adrenaline of of the thing I really like is 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 getting is getting the deal. I love it. So uh, that that's what the yeah that's what gets me out of bed or keeps me from sleeping. That's great. Uh, second question coming up your way. Into your entrepreneurship journey for the last one one and a half years or one one year approximately. If I may ask you two things that you would put on the top, which have made you to really come so far and then ha- is still pumping you to go far enough into the world. Uh, it could be achievement it could be failures it could be anything or it could be just some attributes about the world or about yourself what are those two things that you will rate on the high um the, the people who are um when when i'm presenting my business and what i do um it's just kind of the um um the reception that i'm getting from from businesses now who a can't believe it hasn't been done before um and um when i do an analysis of uh, i do an analysis uh, a free analysis for for the hotel so they can actually see you know how they're currently responding to their reviews and um they're quite shocked so i would say i i haven't given up because i know i know it's a brilliant plan and a brilliant idea and the second reason is just the feedback that i get from my my audience um is Mm -hmm. really really positive um corona has obviously put everything uh, a little bit on on a slower pace um but i'm really 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 excited i just you know i'm really excited when i speak to you in in this time next year Mm -hmm. it'll be great absolutely you will be and we all are there with you for that one more thing, Joanne, just a bit of an imagination from your side. You have seen technology coming into our lives in a big way now, especially in the last year. Uh, nobody would have thought that we would be, we would have been interacting like this over an interview, like, you know, had this pandemic not been there. Actually, it was a blessing in disguise, which have taught us to connect together, eliminate boundaries of the world, and then, you know, uh, really reach out to people in any, any corner of the world. Now, if I may say so, if you are being given a time machine to go to the future and bring one thing from there and implement it now into your business or into the world here what that what is that something that you would love to do if i was go- if i was in the future what would the one thing be that i would take with me yeah in suppose like today we all think like it should be this way or had it been this way the world would have been totally different so i'm saying we never know that this could happen in future sometime so what is that one thing which you would like to uh, Prepone the occurrence and happen. It should happen now, into the business or into the world or whatever, into the world of technology or wherever. Oh, um, um, oh wow, that's a, on the spot. I'm, I'm not actually sure exactly that I understand your question exactly. I'm not a tech geek. Mm-hmm. Um, oh gosh, pass. Ask me another okay. one. I'll, I'll, okay, I'll 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 take this. I'll I'll take this question sometime later again. Maybe next year when we meet again. Okay. <laughs> If I may ask you, uh, for the entrepreneurs around you and for the entrepreneurs across the globe who would be watching this video, what is that one thing which you would uh, sort of advise them not to uh, do that mistake into their entrepreneurship journey? What will be that um, one thing? Gosh, there's quite a few things, but I mean, I would, well, one of the pieces of advice that I was, I, I've not, I wasn't given to it because I understand that it comes from Richard Branson, but I think it is um, <laughs> say yes and then think about how you're going to do it afterwards. Yeah. So on the one hand, I would say, you know, be be really prepared. You know, you've got, you've got to really do your research and mm-hmm. don't rush in. But on the other hand, you know, as, as I've done today and it's been great, you know, just say yes to everything and then worry about it afterwards. <laughs> That's an absolutely uh, brilliant thing because uh, this one habit of yours or one belief of yours have made us to do this interview again if, since you said yes. If you would have said no, we would not have been meeting here and people would not have heard so much about Joanne today, correct? So exactly. uh, quite, a, quite a brilliant thing here. Uh, now, Joanne, before I uh, really wrap it up and uh, uh, and one message that you would like to give to the world who is watching this particular interview from uh, uh, from the entrepreneurship journey, especially, 
uh, what is something that you know they should be looking forward to uh, like one thing that i may add up in order to uh, give you some leeway in terms of you know drafting your answer one is that you have a opportunity to learn from every single individual around you so uh, well, by that, every no, individual around that is that is my my take out of it i i believe that you know every single individual around you gives you a opportunity to learn like i i can't just define in words right now how much have i learned from you today on this particular interview so what is that one advice that you would like to give to everybody in terms of how do they conduct themselves into their businesses into the world around absolutely i mean look you know first of all patience is a virtue things don't happen overnight um you can of course you can learn from everybody but i think one of my biggest takeaways is that the more people you ask for advice the, the the more different advice you'll get because it's very rare that if you ask six people for advice they'll all they're all going to give you a different answer which gets complicated so if you really believe in something you know really stick to it but you should do your research as well mm. okay uh taking it to an end here uh, a couple of things for uh, the audiences here to be summarized and i think if you ask me today uh, the one biggest thing that i'll be taking over from here is before you really enter into an entrepreneurship world first thing is you prepare yourself plan it execute it to the best of the honesty that, that you have and establish your credibility in the world before before you reach out to your target audiences and in the end what joan rightly said you know if you believe in it you may hear many people but do what your own belief says go ahead with it thank you joan it have been a really wonderful session with you we loved interacting with you and i could have uh, just thought of continuing this forever but unfortunately uh, we will have to take care of the time so thank you very much mm -hmm.